The world is divided and Bone Lab is to blame, but between the overhype and janky physics, there's a lot of good to fill in the gaps. So here is everything good and bad about Bone Lab, starting with the good. The physics just makes sense. Everything has a mass, weight, and volume, and whenever you punch or throw something, it just acts exactly like you'd expect it to. The fact that it's so similar to our physics in real life makes it 10 times more fun to pull off crap like this. There's also a lot of different objects that you can destroy just like you can in real life. The game makes use of these physics in six unique game modes. There's experimental, a arena, tactical trial, parkour, sandbox, and mods, and more on that one later. Each game mode offers its own fun, unique experience, and they're all very polished and well-made. Something else very polished and well-made is the secret areas hidden throughout the game. The developers hit a lot of cool secrets out of bounds. These rooms are all over the place, and if you find them, it feels pretty cool. Some of them have movie references, and others include lore. All of the detail put in by the developers just really goes to show how much thought and effort was put into this game, and the effort gets even crazier in the damage system. The damage system is super well done. If you make an MP see mad enough, they'll start to fight back, and if you punch them in a single area a bunch of times, that part of their body will become weaker. To make it even more realistic, getting hit by a heavy object also instantly kills most enemies. And if you want to find the perfect avatar for beating up null bodies, look no further than the avatar system. The avatar system is one of the coolest things about this game. Things like avatar strength and speed are determined by the size of the different parts of the avatar's body, where an evenly proportioned avatar like a null body won't be too strong and not that fast, an avatar with small arms and big legs won't have much strength strength to speak of, but a lot of speed behind them. What's really cool is that you can switch your avatar on the fly. This also works with modded avatars like our boy Saul Goodman. But the best part about this game by far is mods. The modding community has been super active since day one, and not even a week after the game's release, you were able to do crazy stuff like drive a go-kart on Woohoo Island from Wii Sports Resort as Saul Goodman. Since the game natively supports mods, it's not actually that hard to do. Modding the game just makes it 10 times more fun, and if you're stuck on what to do, I have a tutorial which I'll link in the description. All things considered, Bone Lab is a really solid VR game, but it still has its fair share of issues, which leads us to the bad. As I said before, the physics in Bone Lab are phenomenal. Well, most of the time anyway. Sometimes you'll get stuck in an object that seriously hinders your ability to fight, and 99% of the time you're gonna have to wave your arms around like an idiot just to get it off of you. And sometimes different objects get stuck inside of each other and just fly around. If you throw an object at something that has movable parts like an elevator door, there's a decent chance chance it's gonna get stuck. In some cases, the object will actually fall under the map, and this is super frustrating if you actually need it to progress any further. A lot of people have reported the physics system to be really janky and cumbersome. Like, why does the game think it's a lot easier to lift my entire body off the ground than it is to just push a couple of levers? Like, why am I not anchored or something? To make matters worse, avatars with shorter and weaker arms have a ridiculously difficult time climbing over ledges. This is especially frustrating with avatars like the light and fast, and even though you're supposed to be able to crouch with the right joystick to make it over ledges easier, it's still really difficult with these avatars for some reason. But that's not the only confusing thing about this game. The way you collect different items and NPCs is through these little toy capsules which you just grab and open up. Unfortunately, the game gave little to no explanation of how to do this, so most of us just banged them on the wall and shot them like idiots. Another issue? Well, a lot of players, including myself, thought that once you got to the Bone Lab, the campaign was pretty much over because there's no clear way to progress from here. It took everybody a Google search to realize that you're supposed to go up these stairs, put these batteries in a generator, and use these levers to move a crane to put these orbs in place. Long story short, the game could have done a much better job explaining things. Obviously, Bone Lab has its issues, but none of them are really anything that an update can't fix. I honestly think one of the biggest reasons people hate this game is because it got way too much hype for its own good. So while it may not be the immaculate physics simulation that we all expected at the beginning, it's still really premature to get mad at stress level zero for this. And aside from all of the bugs and issues that I did mention, this game is phenomenal. Regardless, it still makes sense that people are mad. This has been Justin from Alternate Reality, signing off for now, see ya.